Um, one of the good things about being a bartender then is that the drinks were really simple. Um, uh, generally, I was pouring scotch on the rocks, maybe a vodka. Um, occasionally, somebody wanted something exotic like a screwdriver um, or a white Russian, um, but that was about the extent of it. Uh, you know, it wasn't like the environment is nowadays when you know people expect you to uh, to use dry ice or smoke in their cocktail, um, and um, it, it, it's quite different now. And um, I think that there's just been such creativity. Um, you know, there are people that are just geniuses at at you know mixing whiskey and making great drinks. Um, I mean, the creativity that's been done in the on-premise industry and, and, and the bourbon and the rye business is just incredible. Um, and it really has come, you know, from, from the bartenders, the bar chefs, the mixologists, whatever, whatever we call them or ourselves. Um, you know, they, they haven't been afraid to experiment. And, you know, some people are just really gifted. Um, you know, and you know, they'll realize that if they add an Amaro uh, to a great bourbon cocktail as a little accent, uh, that it just kicks it up a few notches. And um, th there's there's just so much. And, and I think I think that the tremendous cocktail culture that has really exploded in this country, you know, and been been pioneered by such great people around the country, I think that cocktail culture has really drawn a lot of people that otherwise wouldn't have tried whiskey, you know, to try a cocktail with whiskey. And once people do that and they see, you know, how rich it is and how good it can be with different, you know, mixer, mixers and how good whiskey and bourbon can be in different cocktails, I think then they're more likely to sort of try some neat. Um, and I think it's just great for the uh, industry.